Welcome to the Henry AI Labs walkthrough of Keras code examples. Keras has provided 56 code examples implementing popular ideas in deep learning. This ranges from the basics such as simple MNIST and IMDB text classification, all the way to cutting edge research ideas such as knowledge distillation, supervised contrastive learning, and transformers. We'll also explore fun generative examples like variational autoencoders and CycleGAN. My contribution to these code examples is to explain every single line of code in each of them, walking through each of the individual Keras examples. I'm not the author of these code examples. Please consider starting the GitHub repositories to show support to the original authors. The next Keras code example is Mixup Augmentation for Image Classification authored by Sayak Paul, who's one of the leading contributors to open source deep learning. If you also have a Twitter account, please consider taking a second to pause this video and follow Sayak on Twitter so you can see his latest tutorials live from the source. He also publishes on uh, weights and biases, contributions, and other sources. So I highly recommend uh, following Sayak to get updated on his latest posts. And thank you, Sayak, for contributing this example to Keras Code Examples. Really exciting idea of implementing mix-up augmentation. Data augmentation is one of the most common strategies to prevent overfitting with deep neural networks. Data augmentation has mostly been successful in computer vision and image data, where most, if not really, you know, mostly kind of all of these augmentations really only apply to image data. And what I mean by that is, say, rotations, horizontal flipping, translations, uh, increasing the brightness. These data augmentations defined for images don't generalize outside of image data. But mixup is a domain agnostic data augmentation technique. We're going to display this idea with images, but you can generalize this outside of images, and that's one part of what makes mixup so exciting. So mixup is this idea of augmenting examples by taking two different instances from the data set and then randomly averaging together their pixels. So this random uh, weighting is this lambda parameter where you're weighting how much of each uh, pixel you're going to influence as you average them out to form this new image. So say you take one dog image and one cat image, and then you average them together to form a new example. A really great paper uh, explaining this kind of idea of feature space augmentation and how this particularly generalizes outside of image data is modals, modality agnostic automated data augmentation in the latent space. And this goes even deeper than mixup, defining these other strategies for feature space augmentation. But this is a, a paper that's really interesting if you're interested in this idea of data agnostic uh, augmentation, data domain agnostic. And I, I've made a video on this as well if you're interested in looking at that. And this is also the paper for mixup that explains this uh, high level idea and dives into the original experiments. So the idea is that we're also, in addition to averaging out the original instances, we're also going to be averaging the one-hot label encodings. So we take this average of the two images, and then we take this average of the class label to form these new instances for training and for regularizing and preventing overfitting with our deep neural networks. So this is one strategy to avoid spurious correlations with neural networks. As Sayak states, neural networks are prone to memorizing corrupt labels, and they can, you know, spurious correlations, they assign these different features with the labels, and they have these high frequency relationships. So we want to apply this regularization so they don't get overconfident about the relationship between the features and their labels. This is a really interesting strategy for data augmentation, and also, again, really exciting that is that it can be generalized outside of just image data, and you can apply this for whatever data set you're working with. The code example begins with our standard imports. We we have NumPy, TensorFlow, Matplotlib, and Keras layers. So we start off by downloading the Fashion MNIST dataset from Keras dataset. So again, really easy to load datasets by using the datasets library, just dot load data. Now we uh, cast the pixels into float32, divide them by 255 to keep them in the range of 0 and 1, reshape them for a compatible uh, input for deep neural networks. And then uh, this is a new syntax that I haven't seen. This is a really cool way of uh, assigning one hot labels using tf one hot, taking our original y, tra y train labels, which might be say uh, like three, six, seven, those kind of way of assigning the class label into these one hot encoded vectors using this tf one hot functionality. So then we do the same thing with our test set. And then we define some hyperparameters with the uh, tf.data auto tune, batch size, and our epoch count. So this tf.data.autotune hyperparameter that we've passed in has something to do with the underlying uh, structure of tf.data. So Syac's an expert on building these data pipelines. Uh, you can see some other tutorials on uh, these tf records and all these different kinds of ideas. Maybe Syac wants to uh, <laughs> drop a comment on explaining more about what's happening here than what I understand. But Basically, there's some kind of way of constructing these input pipelines, and the auto-tune is going to just tell TensorFlow to handle it itself, I think. So I think saying uh, tf.data.autotune just means 
uh, do your thing tf.data with respect to trying to optimize uh, the batching under the hood of sending this data into our runtime. So coming back to the code that was looking into this uh, tf.data.autotune thing. So now we're converting this uh, data that we've loaded from our Keras uh, fashion MNIST dataset into these TensorFlow dataset objects with the tf.data object. So we have our validation samples. We split some of our data for validation. Then we're gonna construct uh, two different trained dataset objects as we're gonna be uh, randomly sampling them and then shuffling them together. So we start off by taking a uh, new X train. The new X train is just referring to the X train after we've uh, popped away the validation samples. And we construct these two identical different tf.data objects from tensor slices passing in our NumPy arrays from uh, our pre-processing into these two different tf.data objects, shuffling and batching them uh, shuffling randomly organizing them and then batching them preparing them with this pipeline the data pipeline that we talked about with this uh, auto tune thing even though we don't see that we're passing in the auto yet imagine that has something to do with this uh, batching idea within the tf.data objects so then we're going to uh, construct our overall tf.data set object which we're going to be using for uh, sampling and constructing these mix of augmentations by zipping together these two different identical tf.data objects so we have train ds1 and train ds2 and we're going to be uh, concatenating them together to form this data set object and we're going to be sampling from that when we're calling our mix up function and we also uh, it's easier to do this validation set because we're not you know applying this augmentation to it so we just pass in the and NumPy arrays from tensor slices, the same thing with the test set. So if you're curious about the syntax of tf.data.dataset.zip, which is used uh, here to concatenate these two data sets together, you can see that um, it's used again here, just the zip method is a part of this uh, data set. We see examples where you say construct A by having a range one, two, three, B is four, five, six, and then you can zip them together. So now we see that as we list it, we have one, four, two, five, three, six. So it's a way of uh, zipping together these pairs of two data loaders. So in, in our case, we're cloning our data set so we can sample one, four, and then mix them up together to form our new example. But you can imagine maybe this would be useful for say contrastive learning or other kind of deep learning training frameworks like that. So next up, we're getting into the core idea of this Keras code example, defining the mix up technique function. So the first thing to note is how we're going to be sampling this lambda parameter to weight the averaging of x1 and x2. So say we had just a random sample where you just randomly select between 0 and 1, and this is just 1 minus the random sample of 0 and 1. That might not perform as well as sampling from a distribution of values. So in this case, we're sampling from the beta distribution. So the beta distribution describes these kind of uh, probability functions of sampling our value for our lambda. So compared to, say, a normal distribution, which is just densely concentrated around 0 0.5, which would mean, you know, having an exact average of the two, and then the slight deviation, say, you know, you have one standard deviation or so on, but having these slight deviations from just having a standard average, whereas the beta distribution gives us these different ways of flexibly combining these uh, two different images. And we see the purple one with these two alpha, two beta, two is about it's not quite a normal distribution, but kind of similar. To, that's kind of what we mean by the bell curve. Not like it's more like like that. But anyway, so we have this probability distribution. And it's interesting, instead of learning a probability distribution, we sample one of these well known continuous distributions. And if you go to common probability distributions, you can see things like Bernoulli trials, uniform distribution would mean just, you know, uniform would be just having a straight line across this sampling them all with equal probability, and so on. So we're using this uh, beta distribution to sample this uh, lambda parameter for weighting the averaging of the two different images to average them together in the mix up augmentation. So in order to use this beta distribution, we're going to use tf.random.gamma passing in the shape as the size of our uh, image. And then we have the hyperparameters of the concentration of the distribution. So we see tf.random.gamma, uh, the documentation in TensorFlow, and you can play around with this by calling some of these uh, you can store this in a NumPy array and say do like plt.plot the NumPy array to see the shape of these distributions if you're more curious about this kind of idea. So I'm not exactly sure why there are two separate uh, uh, return samples that are called and they're uh, normalized by dividing the first divided by the sum of the other two. But anyway, so we end up with our, from this, we end up with our lambda parameter for weighting these two images. So next up, we're defining the function that mixes up these two images, taking in image one from DS1 as we zip these two data sets together, and then the other image. So, and we don't actually use this alpha parameter. I don't actually see this come up again. So disregard this. So first we unpack the two data sets. We get images one, labels one from our sample from DS1, images, labels from DS2, and then our batch size is the tf.shape of images one. So we could have say 32 of these images, 64 or so on, as we're defining these batches. And that's the overall shape of this tensor, which is gonna be important for when we're reshaping our lambda parameter so that these uh, matrix multiplications are compatible for both the x averaging and the y averaging. 
So then we get our uh, lambda weighting parameter from L equals sample beta distribution, batch size 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Maybe alpha would be, uh, should be passed in here. But then we have the TF to reshape. So we're reshaping the, uh, the lambda parameter so that it's compatible for a batch matrix multiplication with our image one and image two. And then we also do the same for the Y because we're also gonna be averaging out the uh, class label. So we have an average of the two class labels which is going to be just um, say you have one say you're mixing up uh, in fashion MNIST you're mixing up a shoe with a t-shirt and then and then the lambda parameter is uh, like 0 0.2 is just going to be a one hot encoded vector with two now uh, positions where it's 0 0.2 and I think uh, 0 0.2 would be in the other slot as well so instead of having just 0 1 0 0 0 now we have density in two different positions as we're forming these samples of the mix up of the two different images so we have the shirt and then we have the shoe and then we also are uh, normalizing the class label as well as the image itself. So we uh, project, we reshape our X sub L under, to uh, multiply the image to average it out with the other image. And then we do the same thing with our label and we return our new image label pairs. Sayak also notes that we're combining two images to create a single one in, in this example. We could combine many images. We could combine this sweatshirt with the bag, with the sneaker and so on. We could combine many images, but it comes with the increased computational cost. So now we're gonna visualize the augmented examples. We're gonna apply our augmentation by constructing this train ds mu, train ds dot map is how we pass in this function. Lambda sampling the ds1, ds2, as in how we uh, zip together these two data sets. And now when you sample from it, it returns image label pair one image label pair two and then we apply this function of the mix up ds1 ds2 passing in the alpha hyperparameter and then we have uh, this other parameter on the number of parallel calls equals auto which the way I'm interpreting it means let the tf.data object optimize this under the hood so now we're gonna loop through some of these again we sample the images sample the labels by iterating through this new data set object which is just uh, image label pairs returned from this from our the return of our um, our mix up function then we're going to define the PLT figure from matplotlib, enumerate through our uh, images and our labels, define, index these PLT subplots to create a three by three matrix, and then overwrite each of the individual positions in the grid with the I index in our loop. Then we're also, then we're going to uh, PLT to IM show, casting it to an umpire array, squeezing it to pop out that batch dimension. So it's just, uh, I think 28 by 28 or whatever the dimensionality is of uh, fashion MNIST. I think these are RGB images as well. And then we're, um, or no, I don't think they're RGB images. Then we're gonna also print the label. So the label here is the interesting thing. This is showing us how much each of these images have been mashed together. So in this case, see how this mostly looks like a dress or something like that? We see how this is 98% dress, or you know, it's hard to even tell what this other 0.2% thing is. And in this case, in this one, we see how we see the sneaker and the sweatshirt because we have 72 and you know, 70, 30 is probably an easier way of thinking about that. Then we see other examples of how these have been meshed together. This is an example of just only one probability density on this one class and so on. So maybe pausing the video and having a look at these, uh, these images and then their resulting um, label mix-ups will give you a better sense of how this is uh, working. So now that we've defined the mix-up data augmentation, we're going to define a simple convolutional neural network architecture, mapping these input images into 16 features, 32 features, max pooling to reduce the spatial resolution, dropout normalization, and again another average pooling to reduce the spatial resolution, then a fully connected layer with 128 neurons, a radio activation, and then finally a probability distribution over our 10 class labels in the fashion MNIST data set. So for the sake of reproducibility and comparing the model trained with mixup compared to without, we're going to use the syntax of saving the initial model in get training model. Then we're going to have the get training model. So get training model is going to be rendering this function. So sorry, I forgot that we're defining this as get training model and this renders the function and returns the model. So we're going to save the weights as the initial weights.h5. Then we're going to reload these weights when we're going to test it without the mixup augmentation. So first we fit the model with the mixup augmentation and we see the training curves, we end up with 86.9% accuracy. Then without the mixed up data set, we end up with 86.5. And as noted, in, as Sayak notes at the end of this, the fashion MNIST data set, both these models perform pretty well with it. So it's not probably the best example of seeing how mixup can uh, really work and probably better to uh, test this on more complex data sets. And also I suspect this would be better for learning from limited label data sets, this kind of idea of data augmentation and the mixup augmentation and avoiding overfitting to spurious correlations for the sake of test set generalization. Sayak ends the Keras code example with some really interesting notes about experimental results with mixup and what he's found in his experiments. So with mixup, you can create synthetic examples, especially when you lack a large data set. 
going back to this idea that I expect this to work better with learning from limited label data. This is an idea of regularization in the data space, this high level idea of data augmentation. So say you only have 100 to 1000 labeled examples, you're probably going to overfit to that using deep neural networks. Here's a great technique to try to prevent overfitting by creating these synthetic examples using data augmentation. Label smoothing is another way to uh, mix up these Y labels and uh, assign probability density to the other class labels. In this case, label smoothing is where you apply uniform density to the other classes. So say it's a shoe image, you might move the one density on shoe into 0 0.9 and then distribute say 0 0.011 or whatever into the other classes. So some kind of strategy like that. And Sag notes that this doesn't really work well with mix up. Uh, also noting that mixup doesn't work well with supervised contrastive learning. Supervised contrastive learning is another Keras code example uh, that we'll get into later. I'm not sure if we, yeah, we haven't covered it yet in the Keras code example playlist on Henry AI Labs, but this is a really interesting technique of using contrastive learning with supervised labels. So uh, also noting that mixup includes robustness to adversarial examples and stabilizes GAN training, maybe passing it in to the uh, discriminator as having this other example of learning this data distribution. And there are a number of data augmentation techniques that extend mixup like cut mix and augmix, two other papers to look into if you're curious about this kind of data augmentation. So to summarize, this Keras code example shows you how to implement one of the cutting edge data augmentations of mixup. And mixup is really interesting because it's useful outside of just images. You can average together any two data domains, maybe also working in the embedding space, the intermediate features of deep neural networks when say processing text data or other kinds of discrete data, you might not want to blend them together, together in the um, input space directly. So this example shows you how to implement this cutting edge data augmentation using this interesting sampling of this hyperparameter from a beta distribution. It's another really uh, interesting part of this code example. Uh, and then again, showing you how to load the fashion MNIST data set and overall building knowledge of understanding these computer vision applications and some of the tools that you have available, particularly for data augmentation and when you're trying to fit these models with not that much labeled data. So thank you so much for watching. Please check out the rest of the Keras code example uh, playlist. Thanks again, Sayak, for contributing this code example. And please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.